So Adobe XD added this new awesome feature, Auto Animate, late last year, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use it to animate icons all in Adobe XD. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use Adobe XD's auto animate feature to animate icons all in Adobe XD. And um, it's really, really quick and easy. And once you've done this and you've learned the technique, you can then apply it to any icons that you can create that you want to animate into each other. It's really worth watching. Uh, I mean, obviously I would say that it's, it's my video, but stick around. I think you'll enjoy this one. So we're gonna jump into XD now. Right here, so we're now in XD and you can see I've got some examples of the icons that I'm going to be creating where we're animating from a smartphone through to a tablet, through to a desktop. And as I say, once you've learned the techniques behind this, you can do this with any icons that you create. I've also got three artboards named one, two, and three. I like to just keep things simple, you know? So I'm gonna click on these and you can see the size for these are 80 pixels wide and 80 pixels high. Now they're very, very small, but you can of course make yours a lot bigger if you want to, that's absolutely fine. And if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, there's a link in the video description to download this XD project file so you can follow along. Okay, so we have the examples of the icons we're going to be creating. So first of all, from the toolbar on the left, let's grab the rectangle tool and we'll left click and draw a rectangle, similar size to the examples. And I'm just gonna zoom in actually, otherwise, I'm gonna be squinting at the screen and no one will be able to see what's going on. So we have a rectangle, fantastic. I'm also going to duplicate this shape by pressing Command or Control D. That's the shortcut on the keyboard, or you can go up to Edit, down to Duplicate if you're on a Mac. So once I've done that, which I haven't, <laughs> I can drag this up and we'll position this on the top. So this is gonna be the top part of the phone. Oh, it's, it's very long, isn't it? Let's. Uh, Let's bring that down a bit. And next I'm gonna grab the line tool. This is gonna be where the, the camera, the microphone grill is, all that kind of stuff. So we'll just hold shift and create a little line like this. And well, this looks, this looks quite terrible actually, but if we drag over everything and we can go up here to our align options and align everything centrally like this, fantastic. And I think we're gonna put it in the middle as well. Oh, there we go, XD helps us line that up. Love those smart guides. It's gotta be in the middle. And this looks way off, so we're just gonna try and position that and oh, we can't actually get it. Perfectly central. So if we drag over everything, what you can do is right click and go align to pixel grid and it will snap everything to your pixel grid in XD. If you wanna get pixel perfect icons, this is the way to do it. And it already is, which is fantastic but we still can't get this in the middle. So what that means I'm gonna to need to do is adjust something somewhere. So I might just adjust the foam width and you can see it nicely snaps to the pixels. And I can't get that vertically central, so I'm either gonna to have to make this an extra pixel, pixel taller and pop it in like that, or bring this down. And I think, I think in the interest of creating a super sleek, slim icon for a phone, I'm gonna bring it down and uh, that's, pretty much it. So we've created our icon. Now we are gonna round off the corners and things, but we'll get we'll get everything working first before we start doing that. So there is the phone. Now the next step that's very important is to start naming our layers. So XD knows what to animate between the different artboards. So you can see I've got my layers panel open already, but by default, it should look something like this. Bottom left corner, click on the layers icon. Whew, there we go. Now uh, we've got line one, rectangle two. These are fine, you can work with these, but it's easier if you create them yourself. So we'll select the bottom half, double click on the text here for rectangle one, and we're just gonna call this bottom. Rectangle two is the top half, so we'll call this top. And trust me, when you've got a really complicated project and you've got like a bazillion different layers and prototypes, you're gonna wanna start naming things because it will just save you so many headaches further down the line. Okay, and I'm gonna name this one here aptly Line. There we go, very suitable. Cool, fantastic. And I can drag over it again, right click, pixel perfect, align two. There we go, we're all good. Okay, so now my layers are named, what I'm gonna do is drag over everything, go to edit and copy. We'll switch over to our second artboard. Just click anywhere on the artboard and go to edit and paste. 
fantastic. And I've just noticed that I've got like some random layers left from before. So we'll just get rid of that. Come on, Dan, you should have done that before. Okay. So now we've just got our three layers. We've got our top, our bottom and our line. And I'm gonna expand this out. Now, this is all central at the moment. I don't wanna expand it in one particular direction like this would do. So what I can do is hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard as I'm resizing and it will resize from both directions, whether it's uh, resizing horizontally or vertically. So I'll make this a bit wider. We'll move this up to the top. And again, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and make this a bit taller. And then resize this out. So you can see this is a really quick and easy way of just resizing from both directions at once. This is actually gonna end up being a lot bigger than I intended. So there we go. Brilliant, fantastic, drag over everything, pop it back in the center because of course, and there we go, we've uh, very easily created the tablet. So the key thing here is to use elements from the first artboard and use them in the second one. So we're gonna go onto the desktop one now, a little bit more complicated, but that's fine. We can drag over the tablet we've created, go to edit and down to copy, select artboard three, edit and paste and there's nothing left over on that one. That's good. Right, let's bring this icon into view. So it's a bit wider. So remember Alt or Option, we'll drag out from the sides, but then we're gonna bring this all the way down. This creates this lower part of the desktop here. It's very iMac-esque, very Mac-esque, these, uh, these icons. Uh, but then this one actually becomes the entire display. So let's resize this. And then the speaker grill drops down. And this becomes, well, this is like a very simplified version of the stand of an iMac. So these are very kind of simplified icons. We do have an extra one though, and we haven't actually got that anywhere as part of our icons. Because of course, all different icons are gonna have different components. They're not all gonna be made up of the same lines, shapes and everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to create another one. So with that line selected, go to edit and down to duplicate, or remember command or control D on the keyboard. That's the shortcut. Drag that down and holding alt or option will just resize that from the side. Does that look a little bit longer maybe? There we go, perfect. Oh, maybe make this a bit smaller. Otherwise it's gonna look like a, like a screen from like the early 2000s, like a big old square thing. Okay. Right, so uh, well, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is we can get rid of these for a start. And we're gonna go and switch over to prototype mode. Now what you could do is you could set these to uh, animate or activate on a click or a tap. I'm just gonna use a time-based animation. So let's click on this one here. So it's the first artboard. And you can see I've already done this. Dan, come on. <laughs> You should have removed all this. Okay, so we'll, un we'll remove those. If you want to remove any existing prototype lines, let's try and find a silver lining here. If you want to remove any existing lines, just click and drag. There we go. There we go. There's some extra value in this video. Right, so now you should have no prototype lines whatsoever. And you can click on the first artboard if you're doing a time-based animation. We'll click on the blue tab and drag to the second. Now our trigger is just gonna be, as we say, time. And we'll go for one second. So there'll be a one second delay and then it will run the action. The action is an auto animate. And we'll go for ease in out. This is a, a pretty, pretty common one to use and it gives you a pretty nice result, but you can of course experiment. And we're gonna go 0 0.5 on the transition. So now we've set that up, what we can do is click on our second artboard, drag to the third like this, and it automatically remembers those settings. So that's really, really, really nice, really helpful, nice big time saver. And of course we can click on the third one, loop it all the way back to the beginning. And there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is click play, just to check that everything's working. It's probably gonna be quite small because it's like an 80 by 80 pixel artboard, but I'll try and zoom in so you can see what's going on. So if I click play in the top right corner, you can see the icon will just resize 
indefinitely. Okay, so uh, there we go, it works, which is good. Always good when you're doing a tutorial and things work. However, on the third artboard, we added that extra line and that isn't on any of the other artboards. So we do need to animate that. If you don't, it will just, uh, it will fade in or out. It will just adjust the opacity and that looks fine sometimes, but sometimes you might want a little bit more control. So we'll jump back to it now. So you can see we've got this line down here that isn't present on any of the other artboards. So if we go to design again, and we can see this is also called line and this can cause some complications. We got away with it there because any errors in the playing of the prototype would have been pretty hard to spot, I think, because it happened so fast. But we're gonna call this line two. So you're gonna to want to have different names for all of your different layers that you're animating. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select line two, go to edit and copy. And what we'll do is go back to the second artboard Go edit and paste. Now, Adobe XD is going to auto animate any changes in like position, scale, opacity between these two artboards. So now I've got line two over here on artboard two. If I hold down shift and use the down arrow key, go one, two. What's going to happen when I play this, as you can see that line is going to jump up from the bottom. So XD is detecting that change in, change in position between these two artboards and bringing it up. So if I now drop down the opacity as well and click play, you can see rather than just fading in from that second artboard, it fades in and slides up from the bottom. So it's just a, a nicer way of just bringing that extra line into the scene. So if we click on this line now, of course this loops back around to the first artboard. So again, we'll go edit, copy, and we'll go over here, go edit and paste. So this line is gonna be here on the desktop version and we could send it out again exactly the same way. So we could hold shift. You can actually position it wherever you want. The important thing is that we drop the opacity. And if we play that again, you'll see the line comes in and it goes out. So there's lots of different ways you can do that. Of course, when you've got different icons, they're gonna be made up of different numbers of pieces and parts. So you're not always gonna have like, like two rectangles and a line for every icon. So it's, it's important to know how to add elements in and then remove elements. Because some icons might have like four or five different parts to them and some others might have two. So just worth knowing anyway. Okay, so the last thing to do really is to just zoom out and uh, no, actually we're gonna, we're gonna zoom in. So is to just really add the styling. Everything's working, which is good. So I'm just gonna select all of these top parts by holding shift. And over here, I don't want to round off all the corners. I can round off select corners. And we've got four boxes here. We've got the top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. Thanks at XD for the tool tips, really helpful. So I'm just gonna set the top left and right radius to two, and it just rounds off those corners. And then we're gonna click and hold shift, select all of the bottom parts, and we'll do the opposite. So we'll round off the bottom corners. And then we're just gonna select all of the lines we've created. And if I just zoom in so you can see, we can actually change the line cap type to round cap and it just rounds them off a little bit smoother personal preference as well now all of these icons are the same color so from the asset panel in the bottom left corner what we could do you can see I've added this already I'll just quickly delete that what we can do is we can select this shape here and you can see it has this border color and what I can actually do is go add colors and it will add the fill color and the border color for the selected item so what we could do is actually select everything. We'll get rid of the fill color. We can delete it from the asset panel, but the reason that I've added this gray here into the asset panel is because now I can right click it, select edit, change the color, and I can instantly change the color of all of my icons. So I'll go for something like this. Doesn't really matter. I can just change it super quickly and easily. We know the animation's working. We've rounded off the corners now and added a bit more styling. So if I click play now one last time, we can see the final animation 
playing out. And there we go. So that's how to use auto animate to animate icons all in Adobe XD. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.